Oh, welcome to my new reality. I tell you what, goodness gracious. I guess I should be grateful that we've only just started to have to chase these little Varroa mites. But anyway, today we thought we'd actually show you how to do an alcohol wash. Oh, so I thought I'd bring some alcohol, but luckily I was reading the directions on my alcohol washing program and it said you only want 70% alcohol. So I figure I'm gonna keep Gentleman Jack and my glass handy in case I find a mite and then, well, hell, you might not see me again. Okay, we'll just get ourselves organized and light up a bit of smoke. There's been a little bit of argy-bargy down here in Oz about how these mites got here. I've been watching a bit of the comments going backwards and forwards, and I'm of the opinion, you know what? In the end, just right now, to me, it doesn't actually matter how it got here, because if it's here, we just better get ready for it. That's, that's what I'm thinking. But kudos to you boys up there in New South Wales if you manage to contain it and get it done. Well, heck, all the better. And we'll all owe you a debt of gratitude. All right. Oh, there's a bit of smoke going on. We're just gonna use our easy check Varroa mite catcher upper machine. Luckily this has, you can do actually the sugar shake or you can do the alcohol wash. It just depends on which way you configure it. Though I figure that's pretty handy. Ever who dreamt this crap up, I tell you what, I reckon, like I said, we're 20 years behind the ball game. So you guys have had some time to get this sorted out. Oh, easy check. Voto Fumara. How the heck do you pronounce that? Vito Fema. Fema, Vito Fema. I wonder if that's that, obviously, anyway, we could Google that and find out what language that is for Roa mites in something. Oh, here we go, radio chicks. The whole excitement of, and the controversy between sugar shaking and alcohol washing and detergent using and oh, sending them off to the lab, which is another thing we're supposed to be doing shortly. Well, the story is that the alcohol wash gives you about 95% recovery rate of mites, so which is pretty accurate. And the sugar shakes are only about 90-ish. And I think the detergents are around about the 87 or something or other. In these early stages of the excitement, it's pretty vital if we find one mite, there'll be much to do. I tell you what, I reckon if I happen to find a mite in my bloody <laughs> backyard beehive, there'll be great excitement. I'll definitely be cracking that bottle of scotch. But anyway, hopefully we don't find anything. But the whole point of the exercise is we're trying to make sure we haven't got them so as that we can contain them. But Anyway, here we go. So we're going to walk you through it. Don't get excited out there if you've been doing this for 20 years. I've only been doing this for a couple of months. So, well, actually about a year, but I mean, seriously for <laughs> the last six months or something. Now we've just got to get our super off because it's no good just taking any old bees. You've got to take the bees from the right place. And where do you think the right place would be? Oh, oh that's a terrible joke. Like people trying to make fun, make bee jokes to a beekeeper, it's like, it's pretty lame ass really, but still not much better than a beekeeper making his own jokes either, is it? <laughs> so what we need is we need some brood bees because the bees near the brood are where the Varroa mites would love to be breeding. The way the Varroa mite multiplies and breeds in your hive is that they lay their eggs in your jolly larvae and then the bees cap the larvae and then of course the mite develops with your, with your jolly little bee and so it's very likely, if they're going to be anywhere, they're going to be in the brood nest. I, I did hear someone say at a lecture I was at the other day, they said if you pull off your super and you see a few mites running around the top of your super, you're probably in deep, dark trouble. So let's hope we don't get to that point. We'll just pop off our queen excluder, which we were here the other day a bit. Right. Yes, yes. It's all right, chicks, I know. One would hope we actually get some spring weather soon. It's been miserable cold here in the Riverland for a change. And we'll just pull our bits apart so we can find ourselves some brood. You really want to get yourself where the brood is actually being laid. So you want some little larvae that hasn't even been capped yet, because that's going to give you even more likelihood that the mites will be there working. I'm hoping just right now that I don't have any mites to show you in this process. But anyway, if you're down here in Oz, this is what you need to be doing. Everybody's gonna to have to play their part to find out where these little girls are and how quick they can spread. I'm guessing that calculation's above my pay grade is to work out how quick they can spread across the countryside. Here we go, we've got a nice little bit of cat brood and some nice little white larvies. And we just have a bit of a looksy pooksy and make sure there's no queen running around here. That would be argentageous. 
That would sort of defeat the exercise, wouldn't it? Struck the queen in the jolly alcohol wash would be really silly. Anyway, and that's why my safety method is I actually put them in this white container as well. So just to double check that I don't get the queen. So we just want to give that a shake. The other good thing about shaking them into another container like that is you're actually going to get rid of most of your field bees. So you're going to have an even higher concentration of nurse bees. So that's a double wham, so you get to double check for the queen. And you also get to get rid of most of your field bees and you're only going to have nurse bees. So if you're still pondering what exactly a nurse bee is, skip over to our other information, basic of beekeeping video series and you'll know more about beekeeping than you would care to imagine. Double checking here to make sure the boss woman's not in here anywhere because that would be very disappointing. And that's why I actually got myself a white pot, which is rather fun to find, I tell you what. Plenty of black ones and green ones and red ones and goodness knows everywhere else. Just about every color but white. But anyway, I found this one in a jolly little salvo shop. No, not a salvo shop, but a little variety store in town. They actually had it full of all their display items and I said, oh, I'll have that. <laughs> Now the sad part about testing for varroa mites this way is your bees don't actually get to come out of the other end of this process. So if you're a bit squeamish, just be warned that there's going to be some catastrophe as far as a bee is concerned. But it's all for the good. So sometimes there's going to be some of the girls that are just going to have to take one for the team. So you want yourself some alcohol. And as far as I can figure out, it needs to be roughly 70%. So 70% alcohol, kind of like it's a rubbing alcohol. I, am, I found some metho and watered it down a little bit. And you're gonna want roughly 100 mils in your, in your tester box. And you're gonna want roughly 300 bees. So you can do a count. If you can't be bothered, which is me, if you can't be bothered actually counting 300 bees, because I think that would be an exercise in excitement. I reckon that might take you a little while. Somebody more experienced than me has actually got a half a cup of bees and counted them and said, Oh, that's close enough to 300 for me. <laughs> so I'm gonna run with that. All right, so I've got myself a little measuring pot here. It's got some measurements down the side. All else fails, I can have some sauce on my hot dog. And we want about 100 mils, roughly. Ow, 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 okay, I'm sorry. Ow, look at that, she knows what's coming. Oh, that was a bit naughty. So there we go, that's roughly about 100 mils. Now they've got excited because they can smell that girl's pheromones. Maybe I'll wash that off and put some metho on it. Maybe that'll help. Oh, they get excited when they can smell a sting, don't they? They're after me, John. They're after me. <laughs> don't put your finger on the ladies. They don't like it. They don't like it at all. <laughs> so now we're going to shake our girls into a bit of a pile. And we're going to get our cup. Take about 300 bees. Tip our bees in our tester box. Put our lid on. And then it's about here you go. Dum, dum, da, dum, 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 dum. I'm not really happy about this, but what do you do? No. Tell you what, you go to all the trouble <laughs> looking after these girls and you gotta do this to them. This is crazy. Everybody's sad. Everybody very sad. It's not really sealed very well. <laughs> Trust me, they're dead. <laughs> So I'll just let that sit there for a little bit while I put the hive back together because everybody's getting excited. I think they've all come to the funeral. You're supposed to be looking after us. But how do you have that conversation with your bees and say that we are actually trying to look after you? This is just a necessary evil that's become. Like it's not like it's something that I want to be doing. You wouldn't actually ask for this project, would you? Tip our extras back in. Oh, a little less banging would be good. <laughs> oh, golly, eh? I guess it's not so bad if you only have to check one hive every six months, but if you've got to check 300 hives, poof, we'll pop her all back together, put these girls back to some semblance of normality so they don't have to worry about us. They're not really pleased to see us. They're saying, we're out working for you, and what are you doing? Coming here a racinous, pesty fella I am. <laughs> Now, I'm thinking there's probably no need for us to stay here sitting. We could probably go over on a bench and we can see what we've discovered. Oh, get out of my fencing suit. 
Give us, hang on. Oh, God. Right. Oh, well, now. We've had a little while for them to get organized. Roll them around in there a bit more. The idea of this little check is that you can get the alcohol, wash the mites that are on the bees, and the mites should settle at the bottom. And if you, well, I'm hoping I don't find any, otherwise it's gonna be crap. But if you happen to be where there is mites, the mites will settle in the bottom. You should be able to see the little darlings floating around in there, which we can't see, which is yay team. <laughs> And if you haven't seen a Varroa mite, we're gonna put one up on the screen so as you can actually see what they look like. Luckily, I can't show you one firsthand, so that's a whew, thank you very much to me anyway. The rough calculations are you don't want any more than three mites to 100 bees. So if you've got more than 10 mites in your pot when you do your sugar shake or your wash, or whichever way you decide to view this, you better nip down to your local bee store or get online and order yourself some pest eradication strips and I'm sure everybody out there in the bee world that has done this before can tell me about tea tree oil and everything else. If you would like to get into the middle of this conversation about how to treat Varroa mites, feel free to comment in down here in the comedy section. And, well, let's open the decourse. Who knows where we'll end up. And thank you all for your patience, your Patreon supporters. We so appreciate the fact that you realise that we've got a couple of things going on in our lives. And, you know what, as this Varroa mite looks like it's going to be drifting across the nation oh there might be a few episodes that are a little bit sadder than this one and don't forget to click like subscribe share all that stuff